Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about one of my most recent Chanel purchases. And this is something that has been on my wish list for a minute. I've gone back and forth on whether or not I should buy it, if it made sense for my collection, what combo I would get in terms of the color, the hardware, the leather. So if you're interested in seeing what I ended up getting, how I made the decision, and most importantly, if this is something that you should consider in your collection, then let's get into it. Here it is. Uh, I haven't unboxed it yet because I wanted to unbox it with you. It's nice to see someone's reaction in real time. So let's get into this unboxing. Now, I actually haven't seen this bag in person myself. I had tried iterations of this bag on in the store, but not in the exact combo that I wanted. And so when this came into my local boutique, my essay just shipped it directly to me, knowing that this was the combo and everything that I wanted. So this is actually my first time seeing it too. So I'm excited as you guys are. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you open up the box. Let's get this tape. Before we get into what the bag is, this is just what comes inside. So we have a little booklet. It's like a little care booklet almost. And then this has my receipt. So here it is. Here it is, guys. All right, let me take off the the felt and the paper. So here she is. This is the Chanel Classic Wallet on Chain in black caviar with gold hardware. And I took off the tape already on here. Here she is. And in a first inspection, she looks really good. Obviously, I'm gonna do a deeper look into this afterwards, but my first impressions of this are that it feels really soft. Um, and if you're familiar with caviar leather from Chanel, then you'll know that sometimes the leather batches differ and caviar can sometimes not only look plasticky, but it can feel plasticky and stiff. And this does not feel like that at all. In fact, it's quite soft. I mean, it's not lambskin soft, but it's, it's pretty soft. Also, and I don't know if this is gonna be picking up on camera, slightly um but the quilting is really puffy on this like i feel like oftentimes when i look at wallet on chains even wallet on chains that i've seen in the boutique quilting can look a little bit flat or the bag itself can look a little bit flat but in this particular version the quilting is actually really like squishy and it's puffy and it looks really nice i mean i prefer a, a more puffier look to my quilting i know some people like it flat but i actually really really like this and in terms of how the you know it feels soft but in terms of how the material looks i know on camera it's looking a little bit shiny just because of the light reflecting off of each of the little pebbles on the caviar but in without the you know the harsh lighting it actually is much more matte in real life than it's coming across on camera and i actually prefer that you know again because caviar has that reputation of looking and feeling kind of plasticky um you know i much more rather prefer my caviar leather to look a little bit matte or have at least a little bit more of a satin finish to it and i definitely think this one does so before we get into um the interior of the bag this is called the classic wallet on chain because this really mimics a classic flat bag so they have different variations of this wallet on chain they have the boy uh, wallet on chain they have the trendy the 19 but this one is the classic because it looks like a classic flap so you have the same double cc lock right here it's not the interlocking lock but it's still the double cc you have of course the quilted leather right back here you have the mona lisa pocket and of course you have the leather that's intertwined with the chain the other thing to note about this is that you'll hear me calling this a bag throughout this video and that's because 
the way that I plan on using this and the way that a lot of people actually use this is like a bag, um, like a mini bag. In reality, it's an SLG or a small leather good because it's literally a wallet with a chain on it. You'll see once we get inside that this actually has a lot of more to it and a lot more capacity than you would think. And so it really does function as like a mini bag. And so you'll hear me refer to it as a bag and that's why. Okay, so if we go ahead and open up the bag, this is what it looks like. If you're familiar with what wallet on chains look like, then you'll already notice the upgrades that have been done to this bag, but there have been two upgrades done to the wallet on chain. The first is to the closure right here. So before there used to be a, a snap button closure and people didn't really like that. They found that it was really difficult to close their bags. Some people even had trouble keeping their bags closed because their bags would just pop open. So now what Chanel has done is that they included a, a snap button closure. You can see it has a little sh Chanel written there. It's a magnetic snap button closure. So not only is it easier for your back to close, but it's much more secure because the magnet is much stronger. The other update they've done is to the zippers. So before there used to be, I think, I don't know if it was plastic or if it was metal, but basically the hardware was black or just matched the leather of your back. So in my case, they would have been black zippers. And this zipper in particular had a leather strip or strip of leather as like the zipper pull. Overall, people didn't really like it. They felt like it looked kind of cheap. Um, and I get that. I mean, when you're paying a premium price for an item from a premium luxury fashion house, attention to detail should just be, you know, a no brainer. And so this kind of felt like a missed opportunity. The other thing people didn't really like about the leather strip zipper was that it would flop around and it would stick out on the end when you closed the bag, which they found really annoying. So some people found themselves having to like consciously hold the zipper down and then close it. What they've done is they've upgraded the zippers to now have metal plated hardware that matches the hardware of your bag. So in case, in my case, this is gold, which I actually really like because I think it adds a pop of color when you open up the bag, otherwise it's just all black. They've en engraved the zipper pulls with a double CC. And the other thing they've done is that the zippers, after you're done using them, they actually lock into place right over here, both this one and this one like that and that's really great because that eliminates that issue of it flopping around like the other zippers did. I really like these upgrades. I think it just makes the bag look a little bit better but beyond that everything else in the bag is the same. So starting off right here with this zipper you'll notice that this is of course a zipper compartment and you might be thinking oh nice they have a little pocket right here on the flap of the bag but actually this zippered pocket um, goes the whole length of the bag. This is literally the whole pocket, which I find is genius, you know, and is honestly one of the one of the selling factors for me on this bag because space is such a commodity in this little SLG that, you know, to be able to utilize the whole bag to me is just so smart and so brilliant. And what you'll find is that this is a really great place if you wanna keep anything secure or discreet, or, you know, I know when people go traveling, they'll put their passports back here. I just really love this. And I love how you're not even into the bag yet and it's already, you know, you're getting storage and you're getting compartments. So I really, really love that feature. When you open it up of course this is a wallet on chain so you have your uh card slots right here you get six three on this side and then three on that side and then right over here is the compartment which i know looks tiny right now but i'll get into how you can actually make that a little bit bigger um in just a sec and then right here is where your made stamp is so mine is made in france this also happens to be a little slip pocket you have of course the zippered compartment pocket and then you have one other slip pocket here and then not to forget the little mona lisa pocket back here so pockets on pockets on pockets and honestly that is what makes this bag so functional and so versatile because you can just really stuff it and use it in so many different ways which i really really love Talking about the base again, if you take a look right here, this is what the base looks like. As you'll notice, it's sort of like teepeed 
in. What happens is when people start to stuff their things in, the bag starts to bulk up and they'll notice like just putting your keys in and your phone in will start to bulk it up in a re weird, uneven way. And that kind of freaks people out because they're thinking they're stretching the leather or they're you know putting stress on uh, the stitching. And so that really stops people from putting as much as they actually can in the bag. But what they don't realize is that this leather is the full length of it is just being squished you actually can open it up and flatten out the base to the full to its full length and to its full capacity and all of a sudden you see you have so much more room to play in here and so they actually sell what's called base shapers for this so it's basically like a strip of cardboard that has two flaps going up to help reinforce the sides of the bag as well i was doing some research into it and um they have these base shapers from etsy shop owner outside of the states i'm, I'm in the states and they cost about 30 dollars, and that's including shipping it takes about three to four weeks to get to you so i thought why don't i make my own so I did. <laughs> so I actually found the dimensions online. I'm not a crafter, so I don't have craft supplies, you know, floating around my house, but I do have cardboard. We all get packages. And I happen to have this black masking tape, which I don't even remember why I bought black masking tape, but I have it. Under 30 minutes using materials that I already had in my house, I made this really nice, you know, base shaper. And it was really simple and really easy. Again, haven't tried it in my bag yet, but I will and I, I hope it fits. Um, but it should. I did follow um, the dimensions of, of what the bag shapers are. So I'm really excited to use this because what you'll see is, again, you'll go from something that looks super thin like this, just a really square look, to something that's much more open and wider, and you're not actually putting stress on the leather, nor are you putting stress on the stitching. You're just opening the bag to its full capacity. If the visual component doesn't show you just what a big deal it is, I mean, when you're actually using it, it's the difference between open up your bag forcefully and stuff something in versus being able to really glide something in easily and maybe add one or two extra things in as well. So I really like the base shaper. I really plan on using that with my bag, not only when it, I have it in storage, so it keeps its shape, but definitely when I am using it. Why did I decide to purchase this? Well, there are a lot of factors that went into my decision, but the main factor, really the first factor, is that it was just time, right? It was just time to add this into my collection. At one time, this was something that I was considering as my first Chanel purchase. And the reason for that was because I knew that it was really versatile. I knew that it really, you know, worked in terms of what I needed and the price point was good. When you compare it to what the Chanel, like a Chanel Classic or the Trendy or 19s are, this is so much cheaper, relatively so. I mean, this is still, a, <laughs> this is still expensive for what it is, but again, comparatively speaking. And so I just kind of, made sense and I was really really close a few times to actually purchasing this but every time I was I kind of backed away. I realized the reason why I kept feeling hesitant to buy it was because I still had my heart set on a classic or an actual bag you know something that I had more room to play with. I realized that this didn't really make as much sense for me at that time as I initially thought it would so I ended up just taking the money that I would have put towards this and putting it instead towards a classic bag. Thankfully and luckily after I was able to make the purchases that I wanted I realized I still really wanted this. I kept thinking about it. It just felt like this was now the right time to include it in my collection. The other thing is is that I don't like to include things into my collection that don't make sense or at least I like to think that I have more of a curated collection and for me I didn't really have a mini bag in my in my handbag collection I have a small bag I have medium bags large bags extra large bags but nothing mini and I think the reason for that is that so many of the mini bags in the market right now are really impractical you know if I can't even fit my phone into it then it's such a waste of money, they're so expensive. And like, I have an 11 Pro Max, so I have a big chunk of a brick of a phone and that needs to fit in my mini bag. And thankfully that fits in uh, a walk, a Chanel walk. That was another reason why I wanted to include this because this has that grab and go 
functionality. If you're just heading out the door, you just need your keys, some cards, and your phone. This is perfect for that. I also wanted something that I could use with my work tote or with my work bag, my Louis Vuitton Neverfulls or my Dior book tote. And I wanted something that I could pop into my bag and pull out if I needed to, you know, go grab coffee really quickly, go grab lunch, or if I had like an after work event, this really transitions easily in tonight. I mean, you can take these chains and tuck them into the bag and it immediately becomes a clutch. I would probably hold it more like this. I just kind of like the look of the dangling chains. It's, it's almost jewelry like, right? So I really like that this transitions easily from day to night, which I think is really important when you're considering something like a mini bag. The other thing is, is that I really wanted to use this for travel. So I can see myself as I'm going through security, for example, at the airport, you know, you can put your passport, your cash, currency, cards, IDs, your phone, all of the important things that you need secure on you on your body and this fits it perfectly. You can also use this while you're at your place of destination. So you can use this sightseeing, it's lightweight enough, you know, again, just with your basic necessities. And then in, at night, if you have a nice dinner planned or a nice evening plan, this again, really transitions super, super easy. For me, looking at all the aspects of my life, this felt like a no brainer. I needed to include this into my collection. Once I decided that I was going to make this purchase and I was going to include it into my collection, I had to figure out what combo I wanted, what color, what leather, and what hardware. So in terms of color, I knew I wanted something neutral and what's more neutral than black. I was considering also maybe getting like a beige or a tan or something like that, but you really run the risk of color transfer with that. And I didn't want to have to worry about this. I, I really wanted this bag to be as carefree as possible. And so, you know, you don't really see color transfer on black. So black just made the most sense. But when it came to leather, I had a much harder time making that decision. I know there's this eternal debate in with Chanel. It's either your team lambskin or your team caviar. And for the most part, I am team lambskin. I I tend, tend to like the look and feel of lambskin a little bit better than caviar. When I was doing my research into a lambskin wallet on chain, I kept finding people who reviewed their own lambskin wallet on chains and all of them talked about significant wear and tear on their bags and i know with lambskin people always go they're afraid of like the scratching on the leather and that's like the number one concern but i don't think what people take into consideration a lot with lambskin is that the leather because it's so soft can scuff and rub off really really easily and so what i was finding in these reviews that people were doing was that they all had significant wear and tear on, and rubbing so like right back here where like the mona lisa the seam of the mona lisa pocket is they had like a lot of rubbing on on their bag which is and scuff marks where you know the bag was like rubbing up against their jeans or their pants or their jacket and that was horrifying to me lambskin tends to age better in the long run but considering how i wanted to use that bag it was do i want a bag that has significant wear and tear within just a year of use or do i want a bag that will show wear and tear maybe five or ten years down the line i mean when you put it like that this just made the most sense and now that i actually have this in my in my hands and you know i've, I've felt it and i've looked at it i'm actually really really happy with this because the caviar is not like some batches of caviar that I just hate, where they look plasticky and they're stiff and what have you. This is actually soft, quilting is puffy, it feels nice in the hand, it feels luxurious in the hands, it has that sort of semi-matte satin look to it versus the super shiny look that caviar can sometimes do. I'm actually really, really happy that I ended up going with caviar. And then when it comes to the hardware, that was a no-brainer, I had to go with gold, clearly I like <laughs> I like gold. I also find that gold, A, with the black, I think, is just like a classic Chanel combo. But B, I think gold just works so much better, at least in my wardrobe it does. You wear this during the day, like I'm wearing a sweatshirt right now, and like I think just even like this, the bag and the gold just helps elevate the total look. And then of course gold is just like a staple formal or evening wear metal, so it just works in that condition as well. So I just think you get a lot more mileage going with gold hardware than you would with silver which in my opinion silver especially with the black caviar can tend to look really really casual which will work in daytime sure but in nighttime i feel like you might have a little bit more trouble making that 
pairing. So with all of that being said, the big question is, should you buy a wallet on chain? And the answer is yes. Um, and the reason for that is that I don't think it matters what your lifestyle is. I don't think it matters what you're hoping to get out of this bag in terms of, do you want it as a quick grab and go bag? Do you want it as a night bag, a travel bag, all of it, whatever. This is something that is truly functional for practically everyone. Of course, you have to go into buying this bag knowing that it is a mini bag and that you'll literally only be able to fit your main basic necessities and maybe one or two more items. So it's not a bag bag. And as long as you understand that and know that going into it, then I think you won't be disappointed. This is truly a, a functional piece and something that um, I think everyone should have in, in their collection. And if at some point you're decided that, you know, you just don't want it or you're over it, you can resell it. And this actually does really well on the resale or the pre-loved market. Really, it's it's a win-win situation. Now, do I think this is something that should be your first Chanel piece? Um, yes and no, <laughs> right? Yes, if this ticks off all the boxes for you. If this fits what you want it to fit, if it's the right price that you want it to be, then 100% this makes the most sense. Again, I don't think you could go wrong with this. And I would say no if you have your heart set on a larger Chanel piece. If you're like me and you wanted like the classic or you know, you want a Gabrielle or the 19, trendy, what have you, I think it makes the most sense to be able to just take your money and save it and put it towards that. And then you can always, you know, circle back if you still feel like you have your heart set on this, either through the boutiques or through the pre-loved market and maybe finding a really great deal on this. That way you won't regret your decision because if you buy this first and you still have your mind set on the other ones and you're not sure when you'll be able to get the classic flap, you'll be you'll always be thinking about that. And so you really should buy this when you know you'll be able to enjoy it and love it to its full capacity. So that is it for my video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it filled with lots of eye candy. I'm so excited to use this bag. I'm probably just gonna walk around my house with it because we ain't going nowhere right now. This has been a long time coming and I'm just really really excited to have this and include this in my collection. I've already I'm already in love with it just in this short time that I've you know had it in my hands. I think it was a good decision to purchase and I really want to know if this is something that you also have on your wish list. Maybe you have this already and honestly I really want to know what your ideal combo is like the leather, the hardware and the color because I feel like you can tell a lot about a person's personality through that co the combo that they choose i think it's really telling and, and not in a bad way at, at all i mean in a, in a good way you know fashion is so much of an expression of of our own personal styles and i think that that also includes how we choose our bags um whether we choose them from a practical perspective or whether we choose them out of fancy or love it's it tells you a lot about who a person is so i'd love to know in the comments below what your your ideal combo is you know what you currently have in terms of the wallet on chain and uh please if you haven't done so already make sure that you hit that subscribe button bell notification um so you don't miss any of my other videos because i definitely plan on doing a video on what realistically fits in a wallet on chain I know sometimes you'll see people just like chuck things in and just to show you how much you can fit in but I because of this the size capacity on this I think it's much more useful to see what the actual things you need with you on a day-to-day -day basis like your keys your cards your phone especially if you have a big phone like me if if that can fit in here and how it can fit in there so I definitely plan on making a video on what fits I might even do a video on the base shaper that I made I don't know, we'll see. Make sure you hit that like button and uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to come hang out with me and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.